New details regarding Vince McMahon's resignation from TKO Group Holdings were revealed today in an article by The Hollywood Reporter. The report cites multiple sources stating the graphic details in Janelle Grant's lawsuit against WWE, Vince McMahon and John Laronitis took top TKO executives by surprise. It also notes that Mark Shapiro and Ari Emanuel called Vince and requested he resign the day after the lawsuit was filed. The Hollywood Reporter's Alex Reprin wrote, By the time the Royal Rumble began, McMahon was gone from TKO seemingly for good, as TKO sought to distance itself from McMahon's alleged past transgressions. Those concerns culminated the evening of January 26 when Emmanuel and TKO president and COO Mark Shapiro called McMahon and told him it would be in the best interest of the company for him to resign. He agreed and submitted his resignation. Slim Jim pulling their sponsorship from the Royal Rumble in the wake of Grant's lawsuit was said to be a tipping point for TKO. TKO also reached out to WWE's broadcast partners following news of the lawsuit. Sources say that TKO executives reached out to all of the company's rights partners after the news broke, well aware of the need to keep them in the loop on what was happening. One source noted to The Hollywood Reporter that had Grant's lawsuit been filed earlier, the $5 billion deal with Netflix may have been put into jeopardy. Multiple sources stated that the graphic details included in the lawsuit took TKO executives and WWE talent by surprise. The report continues by saying, According to multiple sources, the lawsuit and the graphic details included in it took senior leadership at TKO and company talent by surprise. In addition to being asked to resign from the company, McMahon is also the focus of a federal investigation into allegations of sexual abuse and sex trafficking. Investigators are said to have met with several women in recent months who have also accused McMahon of sexual misconduct. The Wall Street Journal's report reads, The other women named in the grand jury subpoena include a WWE contractor whom McMahon allegedly sent unsolicited nude photos and sexually harassed. A former WWE wrestler who said McMahon coerced her into giving him oral sex. Former WWE referee Rita Chatterton, who publicly accused McMahon of raping her. A spa manager who said McMahon assaulted her at a Southern California resort. And a former WWE employee who alleged the head of talent relations at the company at the time, John Laurinaitis, demoted her after she broke off an affair with him. Additionally, the lawyer representing John Laurinaitis says WWE management was aware of allegations made by Ashley Mazzaro despite what the company claimed. In an affidavit released by her lawyer the day after her death in 2019, Mazzaro alleges she was drugged and raped by someone representing themselves as a U.S. Army doctor. The alleged assault took place in 2007 while Mazzaro was doing public relations tour of military bases in Kuwait. Mazzaro's affidavit also says that Vince McMahon and John Laronitis told her to not talk about the incident in order to help preserve WWE's relationship with the U.S. military. In the affidavit, she said, McMahon told me not to let one bad experience ruin the good work they were doing. WWE released a statement a few days after the affidavit was released stating they were never informed of the alleged assault and that if they had been, they would have reported it immediately to the base commander. However, Edward Brennan, the lawyer representing John Laronitis, recently spoke to Vice regarding the matter. He says that WWE management was aware of Mazzaro's claims although he objected to calling the situation a, quote, cover-up, saying, Any allegations that Mr. Laurinaitis helped to cover up an alleged rape allegation is an outright lie. He went on to say, Johnny, like most upper-level management, at some time became aware of the allegations and ensured all proper WWE protocols were followed, including privacy for the alleged victim. We object to the use of the term cover-up as no such plan or plot ever took place to hide or assist in the alleged rape. An investigation into Mazzaro's claims was made by the Naval Criminal Intelligence Service in June 2019 and closed in January 2020. The findings have not been made public. Mazzaro passed away on May 16, 2019 at the age of 39.
there has been a major leadership shakeup at TNA Wrestling. The promotion's parent company, Anthem Sports and Entertainment, revealed on Wednesday that Scott Demore's contract has been terminated and Anthony Shoshone has been named the new president. PW Insider is reporting that the belief is the decision came directly from Anthem president and CEO Len Asper. FIFO is reporting that TNA talent and staff were informed of the move today and were on a Zoom call to discuss it as of about 1.20 p.m. Eastern Time. Scott Demore's second stint with TNA began in 2017 when he was brought back to the company by Jeff Jarrett to serve as vice president of international relations after having been with Global Force Wrestling in the same role since 2014. In December 2017, Scott Demore and Don Kellis were named executive vice presidents of the company. Scott Demore was later named president of Impact Wrestling in March 2023. Anthony Shoshone will now run the day-to-day -day operations of TNA Wrestling. He has been with Anthem for 16 years. His current job description reads that he oversees all operations and financial performance of the entertainment group, which includes Access TV, HDNet Movies, Game TV, Game Plus, Fight Network, and Anthem Media Services. He is also responsible for broadcast and IT support for all Anthem operations. In other news, a new AEW show announcement may have confirmed the signing of a major free agent. Ticketmaster lists that the Wednesday, March 13th episode of AEW Dynamite will take place live from the TD Garden in Boston. That week's AEW Rampage episode is also being taped at TD Garden after Dynamite on March 13th. Tony Khan's big announcement on Dynamite tonight may have something to do with the Boston Dynamite my event. It's been speculated that this will be where Mercedes Monet, the former Sasha Banks, makes her AEW debut. Boston is billed as her hometown. She has been out of action since May 2023 due to an ankle injury. At AEW All In last August, she was shown sitting in the crowd at Wembley Stadium. It was reported in December that Monet and WWE were no longer in talks regarding her returning to the company. AEW has since been considered the favorite to sign her. Tickets for the March 13th Dynamite are going on sale to the general public at 10 a.m. Eastern Time this Saturday, February 10th. This will be the second AEW show to ever be held at TD Garden and was that year's blood and guts edition of Dynamite. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and please do not forget to subscribe to F4W online for more.